Who's gonna be the best man? Wes Chan or Tay Chan? <laughs> oh my god. Wait. The... Jen, you're fighting for Taylor. Mike, you're fighting for Wes. <laughs> I have to argue against Taylor? This is my worst nightmare, <laughs> More! Lunch, Lunch break. break! This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. Welcome to another episode of Lunch Break. We got Mike Bo in the house. Well, cool. virtual house. <laughs> With us today is also our plus one Alex. She requested Thai food. So did you guys get Thai food? I did. This, I, got, I, got the, I got basic Pad Thai, but they do like really special. Look at these like the eggs on top. Wow, those look so fancy. Mm. I got mm. red curry. You can't, oh. No, 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 careful. So in the office, we like to debate a lot of things. A lot of arguments and discussions will be going on in the office. So we decided we're going to do a debate club today. Let's throw it back to school. Jessica is here to be our game master Hello. and she's going to be giving us topics to debate about. What's happening is that she will give us two sides and two people will be randomly assigned to one of these topics and we're going to go at it. Wait, were any of y'all actually in debate club? No. No? Why <laughs> nope. you laugh? I hate public speaking. <laughs> yeah, me too. I hate public speaking. That's why I'm laughing. I'm like, I'm so bad at this. Oh, I thought you were like implying that like debate club people were like nerds or something. No, no I like respect I... them so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If anything, I'm like, oh, they're so eloquent and well spoken. So I feel like I really admire that in people. <laughs> we didn't even yeah. have a debate club at my school. Same, like my roommate and I were talking because my roommate had to have debate class and I was just like, was, oh, what? I, I feel like oh. I only saw that in like, Disney Channel movies, movies like right? debate club. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. my school didn't have debate. Like, I want to experience this. Each side is going to present their argument, and then there's going to be a two minute period for free for all rebuttals. None of us have seen the topics. Jessica has mm -hmm. chosen the sides, and we will have to defend something even if we don't believe it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, like true debate club. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, since Mike is our guest, you can start with Mike and Phil. We're doing East Coast versus West Coast. Since Mike is from the East Coast, you're gonna defend the East Coast and Ooh. Phil defend the West Coast. Okay, let me take you on a journey. You know how people have dreams and aspirations and goals in life? You know, happy lives anyway. People always want to go and move to the big city, New York, <laughs> East Coast, the city of dreams, Gossip Girl. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Do you know why? Well, I got to come here to find out because we got pizza, we got bagels, we got halal <laughs> cart, we got the original place where Shake Shack came from. Everyone wants our restaurants and they build them in their cities. This is where the, 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 the cronuts are created. Come here. Oh <laughs> and uh, you will have okay, the best time. Okay, you're good. <laughs> oh, God, he's so passionate. With that, yeah, I, I felt that. Ooh, <laughs> I felt that. Great job, Mike. I can Mike. hear him from here. Oh, <laughs> Mike. Mike, you and your small, small worldview <laughs> that you would put the entire East Coast into one city? Are we here debating West Coast versus New York? That is so rude and insensitive to the entire East Coast population. Whereas here on the West Coast... Man, we have so many choices. We have so many different um, types of environments. We have so many types of cultures. Um, from Seattle being close to Canada and being very accessible to San Diego and our wonderful neighbors down in, in uh, Central America and Mexico. We got food, we got uh, uh, immigrant cultures, we got nature, we got deserts, snow-capped mountains, and okay, forests done. all within like a two hour <laughs> drive and beaches. Hey, how are your beaches? Oh yeah, Jersey Shore? Cool. I want to go there. Not. <laughs> oh my god! Okay. So savage. Oh my god, my heart's, my heart's pounding. Great argument. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> that was a great argument. Honestly, I love snow mountains. I love having snowboarding. So it sounds like you um, love the West Coast. But, but the East Coast <laughs> has more than New York. You're right. I should have been more inclusive. The East Coast has... New Jersey, too. <laughs> you know what people don't like doing all the time? Paying for 
gas. In the East Coast, you can take trains anywhere. You can go to all the states. All the states are right next to each other, one on top of each other. And uh, you could just buy, you could just Amtrak it the whole way through. Yeah, because yeah, you, you have all these little states, whereas California is this one beautiful state. You get everything in California. <laughs> 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 Too big. Who wants those that many strip malls? They want, we want to go through like, ooh, culture, culture, culture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? The culture of of a colonist coming over yeah you guys oh, started this whole my. mess over here we were just you know it happened to us so good good job starting this whole mess you know what you guys have like cool nature and palm trees we got uh trees that are dying in the fall and that makes you appreciate things because you know what if you're in a gilded if you're living in a gilded cage then when you go on vacation to see the palm trees it won't mean that anything but if you're on the east coast you're like oh wow nature this is new, and you'll enjoy vacations more. <laughs> Come to the East Coast, where you, you're suffering a little bit. <laughs> will, lead, will lead to vacations. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we got seasons. We got seasons, all right? We got, we got fall, winter, spring, and the other one. I'm so glad Done. that you have blizzards, <laughs> sweltering heat, it's and humidity. Over. <laughs> Okay, Michelle and Jen. Oh my Wait, god. After <laughs> votes, who won? Oh man. I, I don't know. I like Mike's passion. <laughs> hmm. Actually, Michelle is truly the, the most unbiased one because she's biased? from the Midwest. I'm a Midwestern. I'm like literally in the middle. <laughs> uh, Where are you moving, Michelle? Mike had great passion. I don't know about the arguments per se, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with Phil. I'm sorry, Mike, but I'll go with Phil too. I, all good, appre- all I good. appreciate your your passion. If you're an East More. Coaster, let us know what you would have said in that if you're taking my side. <laughs> More pizza for me. It's all good. We can do the next round with Michelle and Jen. Girl fight. Girl fight. I'll pick based off of what you guys are interested in. Michelle. I, already, I know. Peter Kavinsky. I, I knew that. Jen, <laughs> oh, my God. Talking about to all the boys. That's so funny. Before. We're... we're Texting about this last night. Who is the better eating, guy eating for Lara Jean? It's Peter Kavinsky versus John Ambrose McLaren. Yeah, to anyone who's not watched To All the Boys, you should watch it. Neither. <laughs> Wait, is, it, is, um, is the Ambrose guy from the sequel or the first one? Sequel. 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 Got it. Phil, have you seen this? I have not. Oh, okay. I've only seen oh it God. once, so we're very blank slates. Oh, really? Oh, okay. I saw the first oh, one. Today, me and Phil are both Lara Jean. Yeah, I'm Lara Jean right now. Hmm. I don't know who to pick. If only I could have someone tell me exactly who's better. Um, when John Ambrose and Laura, they, they reunited, they weren't looking at who they were as the people they became. They were looking at their past selves, and, and that's why they decided to flirt with each other, even though it was kind of wrong for Laura Jean. But, <laughs> and Peter was just trying to be a good friend to her, his, his ex, going through something difficult, and didn't know how to navigate Laura Jean's feelings, which was kind of like his bad, but John Ambrose was not looking at Laura Jean presently for who she was, or for who she is during that time, but she was, he was looking at her and, and falling in love with her for who she Cut. used to be in junior high. Time. John Ambrose McLaren. Just, just think about that, how euphonious his name is. This is the guy that Laura Jean needs, played by a talented man's Jordan Fisher, sing, dance, acts, and plays piano. He integrates that in the movie, and you're just swoon, swayed by that. Um, his character is the best friend, the guy next door. He's very intelligent, supports her in every avenue of her life, where Peter cannot because he's an F boy and that popular guy. And John Ambrose is that, you know, the he was the nerdy guy growing up who didn't get the attention but glowed up. Three, two, one, go. So Peter Yeah, can't... but John Ambrose <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but But John Ambrose wasn't looking at who Laura Jean became. They like started flirting with each other because they were like, ooh, look at these past like doki doki feelings that we had for each other. Let's just like play yeah. into it. But history is really important. History builds the foundation and I think that's really important. Current is obvious, but you can tell in the movie and the book they developed that romance. That came from somewhere. Even if it was, you know, fantasized. This is all think, fiction. Are you saying the romance with Peter Kavinsky was not real? The thing is, Peter Kavinsky, even their relationship started off from a lie, a contract. I just don't like it because he's a he's a popular guy and just like has so much ego. 
<laughs> Are you saying popular guys aren't wholesome people? He can be wholesome. This is based on a stereotype. Peter Gavitsky was trying. He's a he's a he's a well-rounded person. He was there for his friend, even though like it was an ex who was going through a divorce that he has gone through before. Well, he was going supporting his ex. He wasn't supporting his current girlfriend. So that's where but, John Ambrose but, came in to support her while. So she was hurt because you be, should be prioritizing your current girlfriend, not your ex girlfriend. But also <laughs> in the second movie, like he admits his faults when he like he messed up, and he was like, okay, what can I do to help? Like to fix this for next time. Too little, and too that late. Was JoJo. <laughs> wow. Okay, you guys are done. Wow. Okay. Okay. Are you guys actually the teams uh, yeah. that that yeah. you argued for? Yeah. Oh, you are. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Those are some valid arguments. I, I have to admit, Michelle, you got me in the beginning with the focusing on the present me versus the past me, because that's kind of like. You know, are you in love with the idea of me or what, who I am mm -hmm. right now? That's a, that's important. Jen had some um, snapping moments, <laughs> and I'll say that the the fanfare kind of worked on me. Like I was like, oh, oh, oh there's snapping happening. So <laughs> this must be a really good point to the guy who's never watched the second movie. <laughs> yeah. So actually, as a guy who's never watched the second movie, I agree with Jen that um, you should focus on the relationship at hand. Um, and that there's a little bit of fantasy when you're thinking about like past exes, if that's even the story. So I go with Jen. You know what? Yeah, Jen had some great uh, snapping points and painted painted Ambrose actually like a lot of like his positive attributes, a lot of his talents and all the things that he brings to the table. I think focusing on the past too much could be detrimental. So <laughs> I think maybe let's focus on the present and I'll go with Michelle. All right, Jessica, this is, right, yeah. <laughs> I, this is not a fair tiebreaker. <laughs> Jessica is Team John, so we're gonna... <laughs> uh, Benson, who Benson. are you voting yeah, Benson's for? Benson's here. <laughs> Focus on school. <laughs> <laughs> Neither of them win, then. All right, it's a tie. Kevin Kevin win wins. Next round is going to be Mike <laughs> and Jen. Stress. Who's going to be the best man? Wes Chan or Tay Chan? <laughs> Oh my god. Wait. The... Jen, you're fighting for Taylor. Mike, you're fighting for Wes. <laughs> Wait, best man to what? Who's going to be Phil's best man? Yeah. Wait. And I have I have Wes? Yeah. I have to argue against Taylor? This is my worst nightmare, Wong Fu. <laughs> <laughs> very, very difficult decision. I'm, um, I'm taking applications right now, all across the country, actually, <laughs> for my best man. Taylor Chan. You know, he might be the new kid, but he's the friend that everyone needs and he has solidified himself into Philip Wang's life. He is an old soul, so he's very wise, and you know, he tends to be the mediator, so he'll give you great advice, as a best man should, because you know, it's not just the wedding, it's the whole process of planning. And because he's also young at heart, he has that in mind, the fun. So you know, like, your bachelor party, he'll be perfect for that, he'll help plan it, and provide that, you know, party life. Because <laughs> you know Taylor Chan, he's the life of the party. Once he walks in the room, you're like, yes, Taylor, I need that in my life. Wow. <laughs> you want to talk about credentials? Let's talk about credentials. Ready for that best man speech? Who has spoken in front of an entire college graduation? <laughs> you know, your future best man, Wes Chan. He's the best. And also, I know last argument we were talking about focusing on the present and not focusing on the past. Let's focus on the past for a second. Let's get nostalgic. Let's think about how we were brought up and where we, how we became... Uh, our formative years of of our livelihoods, like you know, things that rhyme with schlong schlu, such as Wang Fu, and how <laughs> that was all a partnership that was created and nurtured. And now, think of the the the, the all the all the all the catharsis of seeing that best man up there on stage delivering that tear ridden speech about how they were imagining this day. And now both of you guys are actually in this moment together as best friends from over two decades. And and, and how amazing <laughs> that will that will be in another chapter in your future memoir. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay. Also, I'm sure he'll give you a discount on the photography. <laughs> hey, you got me with you got me with in uh with the wallet, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, with credentials, yes, Wes has had a grad speech, but Taylor is an officiator. You know, he's been to multiple weddings. He has so much experience, despite being younger. 
So he knows exactly how to, you know, how to do that, how to navigate a wedding. So, well, speaking of being younger, I know you said like Taylor is younger and he parties a lot. So that would bring a fun party element to the bachelor party. Wesley Chan, <laughs> ooh boy, does that guy know how to party? Like, does he? <laughs> Do, Sorry, do you want to see? Do you want to see someone who just parties normally? You know, you know what to expect. Or do you want to see Wes go crazy, who doesn't normally go crazy, and then gets to splurge <laughs> on important nights in his life, in your life, the <laughs> wedding night? I, I need to hear some um, some negatives about each other. Everything's like oh, everything no, sounds great. <laughs> everything sounds great. I can't roast him. <laughs> <laughs> I, who? <laughs> I who hear you Mike shoot your this. wedding? Taylor has to shoot your wedding. <laughs> so, <laughs> If Taylor's not going to shoot it, then if Taylor's going to be busy with best man duties, then who are you honestly going to trust to know all the shots? So many connections. We're in the film industry. Why does Taylor have to do it? Because Taylor gets those specific jokes, you know? So like Phil's going to be like, ooh, Taylor would have gotten that. But no, <laughs> he's busy finding the ring right now. Wouldn't those jokes be better suited for, for a best man speak? You know, I could see Wes having the sentimental one, but I think... You know, this wedding, I can see it being fun with Helen and Phil. The energy has to be up. So, like, Taylor will guide that, you know, <laughs> a joke-ridden speech. I can see as that. Fun, as, fun, as fun as the wedding should be, though, we know we all know Phil. Phil's a very, um, his, his soul is very deep. And he wants his wedding to be fun, but also Nah, he wants to be party. And, 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 and he wants to feel those humans. <laughs> nah, it's the crazy rich Asians wedding. Jen made some great points about um, the life of the party. Taylor is definitely the life of the party. But Mike, you bring up some great points too, like the history. Like you got me there with like the imagery. You you you're you you were painting a picture of of yeah, seeing Wes up there giving a speech and just talking about everything we've been through. That got me, man. That really, really got me. Uh, but Jen brought up the experience of Taylor actually officiating weddings. That's pretty that's pretty incredible. Um, but Mike, you also uh, you brought up um, free photography with Wes probably. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to save as much money as I can right now. So, Michelle, I'd like to, I, need, I need some help here. See, the, the question is for you, Phil, is what is most important, the party aspect or the nostalgia aspect? Or the saving money aspect? <laughs> All right, it's Wes. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Mike. Good job, Mike. You know how, you know how to talk to me. For the sake of the, the debate specifically, I, I felt it when Mike was like the nostalgia, the catharsis of seeing Wes there. <laughs> And I know Phil would cry, probably, from the 20 years of experience together. There it is. That was a great debate, you two. Great job. Well Michelle done, and Phil, anime versus um, American cartoons? Oh! That's funny. Phil, you have anime. Michelle, you have American <laughs> cartoons. Oh, poor Michelle. <laughs> For the audience, Michelle is like the anime like librarian she's she knows it all it's not true but i out of the whole team well not I right am. now she's gotta she's gotta give it up for american cartoons <laughs> i feel like michelle might explode <laughs> like, this is against her, her core her core being everyone in the comments gonna be like anime is not a personality michelle which is true <laughs> oh man this is tough because i actually really do love american cartoons too <laughs> <laughs> anime is better than american cartoons because <laughs> Who wants to watch cartoons? We want to read cartoons. When, you, when you're watching anime, you're also developing your reading comprehension. Obviously because of the subtitles. And so actually you're getting smarter when you're consuming anime. Also, most animes are based off of manga. So that means that you probably read or will read beyond the anime itself. So, so anime is actually a very beneficial uh, art form to education. <laughs> Right. Whereas Western, uh, you know, Western cartoons, it's just like, you know, just zoning out in front of the TV and you're just hearing crazy sounds and seeing weird shapes. But but anime has themes of like really um, deep themes and lessons. You learn about how to grow as a as a character, as a as a as a human, even as a spirit or a monster. You could be anything and you're learning life lessons here, whereas in Western Western Hi. cartoons. You, it's just it's just whatever's crazy and wacky, but but with anime, you are learning about the world. Not only learning about the world, but you're consuming Time. the world. <laughs> Alrighty, <laughs> Michelle, 
but who really has the time <laughs> to be re- <laughs> to be reading those English subtitles? So if these are like geared towards kids, do you think they are able to multitask that fast to like look at the artwork and look at the 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 English subtitles? No, let's just appreciate the artwork when the people are speaking. And then we can okay, let's talk about dubbed. Who wants to hear <laughs> who wants to hear anime be dubbed and hear those incorrect pronounced Japanese words like Orochimaru, please. <laughs> and you know what? Let's talk about present day too. So American cartoons are now a part of pop culture because of memes. Like everyone can understand like American memes from the cartoons like SpongeBob. We talk about it all the time. We we can describe the memes and be a part of pop culture. And then it's like, but anime means like you have to understand like the like root of it and like who who really watches anime in in. The, the grand scheme of things is a population of America. Not a lot of people will understand these anime pop culture memes. Okay, so, time. <laughs> I feel like a part of Michelle died. Just now. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, for someone who's claiming that um, anime is not very good, you seem to know a lot about anime with the memes and even with that, with that phrase that you said. I don't even know. So it sounds like you might actually be <laughs> undercover um, an anime lover, which really makes me question your authenticity. If anything, doesn't it make me even more authentic because I have seen both and I am able to unbiasedly <laughs> judge the criteria of anime because I have experience watching anime and I know the flaws of it. And, and I've watched American cartoons, so I know the pros and the cons. Of oh, oh I watch American cartoons too. And that's so the reason that why- make you more ingenuine too? <laughs> SpongeBob meme, oof. You know what? If you want to have a culture that can't read as they watch, wow. Um, that's not a world I want to live in. But uh, please join me in a more cultured um, man of culture. So you're, saying, so you're saying that people aren't able to read while they watch cartoons? You know there's a thing called subtitles in the TV? Like there's that option. So cartoons are geared towards um, children too. So they're, they're lighthearted. They don't um, require that much commitment to go through all the series, and you can just pick it up whenever you want. Like, let's say SpongeBob. They're episodic episodes. So that means, like, kids who might not necessarily have control over their time and their schedule, they don't have to consistently be like, oh, mom, I have to watch this at, like, this SpongeBob episode at 12 p.m. No, they could just watch it whenever they want. It's very lighthearted, and, and they can consume it, like, uh, very happily. Excuse me, did you group all <laughs> consumers? Of, of animation into kids that is so offensive animation is an <laughs> art form that can, can be can, that can be consumed by all ages and we now know with streaming platforms that you can watch any episode of anime at any time it doesn't have to be where do you live in the 90s you can watch anime at any time and come in at any time the whole reason is they have they have hundreds of episodes even if you were following a storyline it doesn't even matter <laughs> by the end Okay, plus they have filler episodes, so there is just the, the random fun as well that you can just drop in. So I'm sorry, that is that is just a completely, completely false um, statement and very, very rude to just say all consumers of anime slash cartoons are children. Hey Phil, can you name at least five animes? <laughs> Pokemon, <laughs> Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, Naruto, Attack on Titan, Hikaru no Go, Full Metal Alchemist, um, Full wow. Metal Panic. Now, how many of those have you completed? I watched all the American dubs <laughs> of Sailor Moon and Pokemon. So at the end, Phil, you got a great argument, but Thorell was a little bit weaker. You focused mainly on the education part when like, you know, anime is so much more colorful. Yeah, Michelle brought up great points like to critically analyze anime in her arguments. And I really appreciated that. I appreciated Michelle's um, specific examples with the SpongeBob memes. I was expecting some exa specific examples of anime, I, uh, of, of why specific animes were good. I would have appreciated that. But I also appreciated this new tactic of disparaging <laughs> the person him, herself, <laughs> the <laughs> argument to herself. But I would say the education part got me because I do know people who are learning Japanese because of anime. And it's very useful, I would say, um, in current life if you say want to go to Japan versus understanding a meme I would say is less useful for me. So <laughs> I side with anime, unsurprisingly. <laughs> yeah, I think just based on arguments, I go with Michelle. Now Phil had some good points about education. <laughs> <laughs> but I felt like Michelle was way more well-versed in both sides. So I have to give it to Michelle. Oh, man. Ooh! 
<laughs> All right, let me know in the comments who really won, guys. Yeah, I cast your votes for every single argument. Great debates, everyone, all around. No hard feelings to anybody who likes American cartoons or anime or West Chan and Taylor Chan <laughs> or anyone from the West Coast and the East Coast. This is all for fun. Good game. Good game, Good guys. Game. Good game. Thanks again, Mike, for being part of this. Um, you were a, uh, you were a master debater. Yes, I'm a I'm a I'm an experienced master <laughs> debater. <laughs> Thanks again to Alex for being our plus one today. Sorry um, that you had to be part of this food fight, um, but uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, yeah, everyone listening on the podcast, thank you for listening. Mike's shirt that he's wearing right now is actually on clearance. We're having a warehouse sale, so check out the links below. And uh, we'll see you guys next Thursday. Bye. Woo! Bye. 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 Drive Team safe, anime. podcasters. Big shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. Since we do lunch break podcasts, we take advantage of their audio blocks feature, which allows us to embed audio right into our website and integrate with other platforms. It works with blogs too. So head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready, you can use our code WONGFU at checkout to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. You know what? I think I'm gonna head over too.